force a lot topside here. If that Graves gets locked in from Damwon, they can look for Ken and Lissandra here and just go full team fight. Lee Sin, Ken and Lissandra would be great here. Of course, the Graves can be a flex, but then uh, they'd have to pick Jace on three. Then they're playing uh, Graves Jace into your topside. Lissandra Kennen here would be fantastic for T1. And frankly, T1 just going to be playing an entirely different comp. They have already locked in Lissandra, but now so many tools to get things started. So much AoE with Lissandra and a potential multi man Lee Sin kick. Picking up. The support of AD carry for themselves, saying we don't need Gumi Yusi to play that hyper carry. We're happy to have him take a step back. And frankly, from what we saw in the Jin in game one in the hands of Ghost, it seems to be very powerful. Yeah, Ghost has been doing really well on the pick. Obviously, has a world skin on it. Not a bit, not bad at it. It's usually a hint. Uh, but you know, he can take the MF side of it here. So we'll see if they want to go towards that. Instead, they're going to prioritize jungle very likely. Zin makes sense if you want to play for a powerful top side, which Dalmon showed they did in game one. But now this gives T1 the ability to actually ban out some more of these marksmen. And and try to push down Ghost on the tier list. Yeah, but if Damon ban away Kennen and Gwen, I feel like T1 are kind of starved for top laners with AP damage into the Graves, right? Unless you, want to, unless you want to match it with something like a Jace and then run Jace into the LeBlanc again. Damon probably going to target top side you expect, but like I said, T1 on the opposite side with the Jin can ban away things like the MF, can ban away things like the Estral or, or Kai'Sai in a safe sense for options to start playing through bot more. And the AP bans coming out as predicted. See if they're going to follow up with the Kennen as well. Kennen, the champion, hasn't really shown up yet so far in this series. Obviously, hugely powerful across the entirety of Worlds with a focus instead on a lot of these early powerhouses like the Graves. See what the option is going to be for T1. Don't have to worry about counterpick or like will have access to counterpicks for the solo lanes even though they are on blue side. But bot lane matchup was crucial in game one and it looks like that's the, where the focus is going to be. I would be really interested too if, if T1 was actually willing to go towards the Jax. We saw Khan bring out Jax into the Graves. You know, if, if the cannon is going to get banned out here, that is another option. That is mixed damage. Yes, it's not pure AP, um, but can actually work fairly well if we've seen that. I feel like if you're going to draft a split pushy top laner, I think now with Kennen and Gwen gone as expected, Camille would make a lot of sense with Lissandra into LeBlanc. You need lockdown. Playing things like Jax and Jace and these things into LeBlanc, you really struggle to get in range. If they want to play pure team fights and 1-4, I think Camille sits, suits their comp pretty well. I just feel like with this AD carry pick, they've drafted themselves a hold to avoid team fights. But Leona, to me, is now the biggest high prior. Does either team get Leona here? Because I feel like Damon, if they ban away an AD carry like Ziggs, Leona is probably the highest prior uh, right now as a support because the enemy bot lane is playing Jin, Jin Brahm you won't really see into LeBlanc. I like the Ziggs ban especially, make it that much harder to go for either the kill lanes or just freeing up Ziggs to sit solo on the bottom side. The tier list does get a little bit bleak with the options remaining at this stage. Is Ghost gonna go for a hyper carry? Draven would be an <laughs> oh, option. No. Are we gonna get are we gonna get carry as Maokai maybe? We saw Jin Maokai last game. Say. Yeah, into LeBlanc, you, it you would be fantastic. Actually, you could actually take the other side of it because that is kind of a new wrinkle. The Draven's locked in. Okay. okay, let's go. Ghost was was popping off in game number one, and now he's got to have a good game because if you don't have a good game on Draven, you have an awful game on Draven. Absolutely, and Draven with the changes to all, his ultimate has looked strong in this tournament, but rarely in professional play do we see players who are confident enough to pick the Draven on stage. Even more, trying to pick up that axe against the Jin, against Lissandra. It's going to be a tough task for Ghost. He popped off in game one. Can he do it again? It's, it's so interesting because if T1 go Leona, they know the barrel could still just answer with with, with the Maokai, which actually seemed like a pretty good interaction. Oh, there. that's a Yasuo locked in! Oh, Yasuo that's a Yasuo locked in! Hey, wait, is that, is that Yasuo Lee Sin top side into Graves? Is this gonna be Yasuo top or is it gonna be like Lissandra top? Flexing, I saw, flexing Lissandra top. I saw this Kana so playing Yasuo yesterday in solo queue. Now, I will say he was running it a tiny bit, but he got <laughs> camped, but he it was happens. playing Yasuo Jungle yesterday. Death. Yeah, he was playing it yesterday. So I think this is Yasuo into Graves. First, we saw the Maokai so into Leona matchup, and now we're seeing Yasuo into Graves. Alistar are going to come through, four barrel makes sense into things like Jin Rakan, but Lee Sin Yasuo has good kill pressure. The only worry I have for them is this double AD into Graves. Is it Cassandra top? That, that's what I was thinking is they, they might actually be doing that to have the AP into it and Faker could play it mid, but they're no. going to swap yeah. and they still makes have time. Sense. Yeah, this, this does make more sense, so we especially were, because you want to have Lissandra matching into LeBlanc. Yeah, we were worried for T1's top lane, you know, with Kennen down, Gwen so down, they're blind picking Graves. Are you going to play Jace? But no, they're going to play Yasuo, and this was prepared from the get-go. And while this is not a do-or-die matchup, T1 are still down a game in this series. This is high pressure for a Yasuo oh, yeah. top lane. And this is not by any means an we easy Yasuo to play against. This is crazy, actually. Game two here. <laughs> Both these teams clearly coming with a lot prepared. We get the Maokai supporting game one. Game two, we're getting not only the Ghost Draven, but you're getting Kana on Yasuo. These very explosive 
feast or famine style champions. After game one, I, game one we called feast or famine. That was nothing. Those guys were eating good no matter what compared to this. It is all or nothing here in this game. Yeah, and you've got Ghost picking Draven into Gumayushi, and then you've got Kana picking Yasuo into his idol of Khan, who he's looked up to and is fighting for him for a spot in the finals. Mm. He is willing to pull out the Yasuo Lee into Graves. This is going to be a bloodbath on both sides, both side lanes. Mid jungle, I think, is the, is the focus then. The gauntlet has been thrown down, no doubt, as we get into game two. Will the student become the master here? Can Kana just take down Khan? Graves so powerful, so oppressive. Yasuo a champion though, that when he gets going, never stops. And I wonder if Yasuo has the TP. He does in the end. So Fleet Footwork TP, Resolve second, Doran Shield. So maybe not as much action as we'd hoped for in the first few levels, of course, just, just sustaining up and will get pushed in by the Graves. But something you can play towards at level six with really good lockup from the Lee Sin. And we needed something to lock to the Blanc down. That's what T1 was looking for. We thought they'd pick Camille, but a Lee Sin kick or any knockup from Rakan for a Yasuo to stun him, stun her up and get the kill is something that will help them. It's also worth mentioning, Windwall later in the game is going to have so much value against double marksmen. When you're playing against a Graves plus the Draven, there's really, really high value with that Windwall there. I'm going to be so interested to see how mid lane is going, though, because we did actually see the same matchup from Faker and Chovy, and Chovy definitely was getting the pressure in those early levels. You know, this is more about a, a, more of an answer to LeBlanc and not necessarily a counter to LeBlanc, and you will still expect Faker to lose the early lane, and I just want to see how heavily weighted it is towards Showmaker. No matter how exciting the bottom side of the map was, we do have to pull attention back to our uh, featured matchup presented by Mercedes-Benz. Showmaker versus Faker again. This time, Faker with the counter matchup. Faker the one who has the tools to answer. Yes, it's not the flashiest pick, but his teammates have got him backed up with flashy picks uh -oh. plenty. Kana didn't spot the late invade. Canyon and Kana walking up for the blue buff. They're gonna get this for free. Kana actually ran away the second Dam One's top jungle walked in. So now it's almost like a split map situation. The problem is T1 doesn't know it's happening. So owner will path top you expect, but then after this red Krux Raptor's pathing, he'll realize his blue is gone. Yeah, and, and Draven is, as well as the Alistar, Barrel Ghost, they faked the leash. They actually went up to the blue buff. They came down through river. So they enter the lane from there, you know, really saying, hey, we were, he's over here. He's over here, guys. He's clear and bought the top, but it's not the case. And Canyon's going to take away multiple camps. And this could be a d disaster scenario. If your bot side's getting pushed in, you go towards top, all your camps are gone. It gets really, really rough for owner. Baron Ghost, uh, not just playing for the bot lane, playing for the Oscar as well. Gumushi and Karyo see how they fight back on this one. Halo Blades Draven is just very, very oppressive in trades if he's able to land a few of those axes. That said, Gumusi might not just give him the space to do so as Canyon already moving across, looking to take his own camps, will get spotted crucially as he enters the jungle here. And so they will have that info. And that's very important now because Owner will see Canyon took away his blue and now he's question mark pinging. Hmm, did he take my blue? He has bot push and he has mid push. Owner could have just ran straight to the enemy blue that's right now. Level say. 3 decent and contested, but he's opted out of it. Maybe he's scared of some early top play and wants to make sure the Yasuo is safe. Sinzao is very good into getting early games. Onto Yasuo. But if he doesn't go, if he doesn't go invade the blue side now, he's just going to be so far behind, right? You're going to be giving away so many camps, and Dumbo will have full knowledge of where you are. So he has to go now. They're pinging towards it. T1's bot side with the push are looking to invade, get the vision down, and owner's going to come over here, and they're going to have to try to play, you know, split map, which makes it very difficult for Kana because now you're playing this this kind of high risk, high reward melee champion in Yasuo, but your jungle is not on your side of the map. Yeah, and Canyon's probably going to do Krugs into Top Crab and maybe look for an early top dive. Really good lockdown. Well, are they going to go from mid? Sin Zhao. They want to dive Showmaker. Faker can flash, flash w, w here. Yeah. And Keria could follow with Flash W himself. Yeah. If it Maker misses. Backing off. Flash forward. That's a W. Instant follow up. Showmaker now running. He's going to try to outplay this one, but first blood dropping for T1. An excellent start in the mid lane. Yeah, T1 proactive once again. First blood, second game in a row. And that does go on to Owner, looking a lot more confident. Owner, a very kind of aggressive player, feast or famine playstyle in the LCK. Once he's ahead, he knows how to play from ahead and he's very comfortable. We saw on the Poppy, his first gank towards bot in game one, he fell behind, he died. And from there, it felt like Owner really wasn't in the game, but this time around gets himself a kill. And Showmaker is still going to connect the chains here. Owner stopping the recall there just in case Faker gets collapsed on. Yeah, so Owner doesn't end up actually taking away any of Kenyon's camps whatsoever. So, you know, Canyon is going to kind of catch back up here. I will say, Faker should have flashed in earlier before the minions got there, because then you can actually follow up on the queue. When they win in this late, owner has to ward hop in, then try to get in range. It's actually very difficult for him to actually close the gap. And then, as an additional cost, he had to spend his flash to get out of the tower range because he didn't have his safeguard available since he needed to use that to enter. So it could have been a little bit cleaner, but a really nice aggressive play. Yeah, they still got the playoff, which is really important. And now Owner is slightly ahead of Canyon. You've got this jungle matchup of Owner, who was on T1 Academy in 2020 when Canyon was winning Worlds. 
And Canyon is notoriously the best jungler over the last two years versus Owner in his debut year at Worlds. And I think overall, Canyon is a player that we always have our eye on, especially after the least in performance in the last game. Because when you think back to players that have won multiple titles, it's Bank. It's Faker's third summoner spell. The guy who was the supportive player to help out, to help out and support Faker. On the opposite side for Canyon, this is a man who has carried tournaments single-handedly, carried games single-handedly, a very different style, looking to cement himself in the same way that Bengi has been cemented in league history. Absolutely. I mean, Bengi is the only jungler to have multiple world championship titles. Canyon is, is on the hunt for his second. He's looking you know, to really put himself into that conversation for a best jungler in history. And I do think he is getting there. If they win this year, I do think you have at least got to consider him up among those greats. You definitely have. And Canyon, of course, has base picked up first kind of component for his item build. And he's going to go through his second respawn camp. So we saw him on the Krugs earlier. Luckily for Owner, this Grump that he'll pick up is a level two Grump, right? So yes, he lost out on camps early, but the second respawn will help him out and get him to level 5, you expect. And then both junglers, once they hit level 6, with Lissandra level 6, LeBlanc moving around the map top side, you have to uh, you have to guess, is the focus for both these teams. And looking down towards the bottom side of the map, I'm just wondering how Gumiyoshi and Karia get out of this lane. Now the barrel has made it to level 3, much more kill pressure. Ghost sitting very comfortably, keeping that pressure up on the bottom side. At some point that has to break, at some point somebody has to recall. See where the pressure goes for now is... Owner on the top side, just looking to cover Akana for now. Only level five here. Canyon Con surely more than enough damage to lock up the Yasuo, but always a risky prospect to dive against the Wind Wall. Yeah, I think it would be a really risky dive, especially because he is full health right now, has been spotted, but can at least threaten this, and they want to try to potentially zone him off. They don't have TP from Showmaker, so I think it's just going to be get the vision, play towards top side Scuttle. Showmaker is moving from mid, though, which is going to make you pretty nervous as Kana. Yeah, Kana hasn't based yet. He still has TP. We'll have to base and pick up Boots first item, tier 2 Boots, Berserker Griefs, you imagine, and then play towards the top side. I think a big thing that hurt T1 in game one was they moved towards the Herald, they watched it die, and then they backed off. And I think having that early Herald just sets the tempo of the yeah. map, and that's something you need when you're playing Lee Sin, Yasuo, Alessandra to start snowballing the game. And you can see T1 was paying the respect to that possible dive. You know, as soon as Showmaker actually was missing, owner's camps were respawning on bot side, but he went top to just make sure that he was close enough to respond to any potential dive if that were to come in. It did not, so he covers the play, moves back towards his second red buff. He's going to clear down towards bot side, and we'll see if either team wants to move towards an early dragon or if it's just going to be all about the Herald setup. And game one, a little bit more aggressive. Four kills, I believe, around the 10-minute mark. This time around, just one kill at seven minutes. See what else is going to go through. Certainly a lot of setup on both sides to make these kills happen. Faker, though, with a bit more reliable point-and-click CC carry, approaching level six. See where the focus is going to be. Harold, you already brought it up. I feel like is naturally where we expect, especially T1, to go. But Don Juan Kia have tools to fight back. That said, if you if you take a risk against Yasuo and he gets ahead in this game, it's going to make it so much harder. Definitely is. And 30 seconds till the Herald spawns. Khan's going to base and run out towards the top side. We'll cancel it in the end, and Owner's trying to get level 6 as fast as possible. Lee Sin Lissandra level 6 is so powerful into LeBlanc. This Lissandra LeBlanc matchup, whoever has Lee Sin kind of wins out on the 2v2s because of the lockdown you have, and the CC setup for the burst to take LeBlanc down. And you can see both supports have been hovering around mid for so long. Gumayushi actually dropping bot waves this time around, and being on the Herald play first will give Ghost some room to breathe, and he will be able to get some plates for himself and get himself ahead, but T1 probably just going to get this Herald and try to force this top tier one. Yeah, it looks like it, it will be the inverse, but this time, we actually do see Ghost is starting to cheat up into the river, but going back down now, so he's not going to move. Uh, and I think it will just be a free T1 Herald. And we'll see how, how much they're going to be able to get off of this. I mean, if you go up towards topside, as you're saying, you start to get Kana ahead. Lee Sin is now six. That can be a really frightening duo. Looks like Gumiyoshi will just run back. Bolt has the tier two boots, but again, you will bleed plates and experience. You can see Ghost is level six. The good thing for T1 is mid lane has been a great place to unlock so far, right? Faker's got the assist. He has really good setup, and mid tower is already at four platings, but it looks like actually they're going to a 1 3 1 eight minutes in. Match Faker, Bolt, wait for his TP to come up, and then have their bot lane in mid. And I like the adaptive lane assignments, frankly, because Ghost is getting scarier and scarier. Remember that execution will come through on the ultimate based on how many stacks he has. And this man has just been sitting in lane, farming and picking up stacks. So going in 1v1 as a Jin is a risky prospect. And, and Harold's going to get you two plates, right? But Ghost already got two plates of gold isolated just for himself. He also got ahead in farm. He got ahead in experience. Kana up here by himself on this top side. Barrel will be spotted by the ward as he moves up. So now you can expect Owner to move up here and try to cover, and nothing really should come of this. Khan very comfortable in this matchup, honestly. Quick drawing away from the empowered Q. Very massive, but a wind wall coming out. Owner waiting in the darkness. The setup for the play is here. 
I hope he had 3v3. Faker actually pushed out bot and moved towards mid. Ghost altered bot wave to push in as well. He's going to run mid too, so it's a lot of tension here in the top side. River trying to force Damwon out T1R, and Damwon's looking for some kind of dive onto Kana. They will get this top crab, and they're trying to maintain top side vision. Dragon is up, so both teams could just pivot towards the bot side and get that for themselves. But it's just a trade off of waves and tempo right now in each lane. Taking the time, Gamushi just trying to push this wave out as quickly as possible so he can recall. Ninja Tabby's coming out, respecting the triple AD threat on the opposite side. Knows that he may get caught out and be in trouble if he does not have that item. Of course, in the meantime, just keeping our eyes on items across the board. No one completing anything major, no massive advantages for either side. 200 gold, the only thing in favor of Don Juan Kia. Will be balanced out when the Herald is finally used, but that is a ticking clock for T1. They need to find that pressure on the map so they can set it up. This game is going to open with a click of a finger. One huge team fight is going to make it so the game swings in either way, right? You've got T1 with really good hard engage with the Lee Sin kick into Yasuo and to Lissandra. If they can get a kill, then they can start to move forwards with the Lissandra passive and get uh, resets and get more kills for the entire team. But if Ghost gets a kill and gets a reset and gets his gold on his passive, then Damwon are just going to snowball so far ahead. So it's so much tension on the top side to see who can crack open the base first. About 230 stacks for the Draven. So if you're at 230 health or less, you will be executed by the Whirling Death. Damwon have three here, and T1 does have Owner, but that might give them a false sense of security. Khan now stepping forward. Owner off to the side. Flash out. Flash. Denying. Owner taking his time. He went a Lock up Khan. There's Khan going in. Lissandra in the midst of everything. One kill can reset the entire fight. Keep your eyes on the frozen thralls as they start to come out. That's one. Finding it. Now the ghost of Zin Zhao moving forward, looking to slow them down, looking to break them as Khan is popping off. Looking for the third stack on the queue. Can he find it? Can he find the knockback from Barrel? The turn. Owner, Owner getting dropped. Showmaker finding the kill. Down while Kia standing. Oh, strong Faker in the skirmish. Faker staying around a little bit too long. Showmaker now backing off. It is neck and neck in this battle, but at the end of the day, it is only a one for one. It started so good for T1 there. It looked like they were going be able to clean up multiple kills but the team fighting of dom one so clean showmaker can he actually stop this base from kana keeping in distortion there buying as much time as possible Ghost in the meantime, still pressuring on bottom side, pushing those waves under tower. And it just ends in a one-for-one. One. So much happened in that fight. So many great mechanical execution plays from both sides. Faker just about missed his Flash W to get the final kill to make it a two-for-one so they can maybe look for a Herald play top. But it was all contest on top side. If T1 was able to win that fight, that's top tower dead. If Damwon was able to win that fight, then they can start to snowball the game through top side. Owner is just going to drop it mid. Yeah, he's got to drop it now. He doesn't have much time left on it. And the one thing that's kind of bad for T1 is they actually spent all three flashes from their top side there on that play, where Candy and Showmaker still have theirs available, so there is potential to try to punish that. They at least cash in on the Herald, get a little bit of something there, but Dawnwon still in the slight advantage. Ghost now has the Mythic complete, he's looking good. And this is where we get a glimpse of how how good T1's comp functions in the Axe Effect replay. Kana actually flashing Barrel's combo while blinded there. The kick comes in, into the Assault, into the Sandro. That's the follow-up. That's the single target damage they want to get a kill, get the reset, and then start moving forwards. Unfortunately, T1 didn't actually have the damage to finish off Khan here. They chased so deep on the tower, and it let Barrel get a headbutt onto Owner right here into their Tier 1 to turn the fight. Yeah, absolutely. And Khan just kiting it back so incredibly low here. The knock-up hits. Faker not able to connect on that Flash W there to finish off Khan. That's his flash down, and it's T1 just barely losing out on that fight. And the big thing here is that you saw on that one, the true grit value from Graves as that fight extends, as yep. he finds those quick draws, that armor coming through makes Owner and Kana's cool. damage so much less effective. This is a really big spike for Dom One. I'd like to see them try to fight for this dragon right now. They just finished Mythics across the board, right? They've got four in the inventory now, double shield bow, the Gorg Drinker's through. We already had that Luden's done for Showmaker, so they are really in a good spot right now if they can look to try to make something happen and they are pathing towards that dragon. More than 300 stacks on the Draven 2 is a ticking time bomb. Eventually his ult will just kill you. You need to kill Ghost. If he finds a kill in one of these fights before you shut him down, he will be so massively far ahead. T1 just aren't ready to fight though. They don't have their mythics complete. So, you know, they went for some different options. We obviously saw the Zerker Griefs rush. We saw the Tabby's rush. That put them behind in both top and AD carry to actually complete that mythic. So they're not going to look to fight. Instead, Owner. they're trying to get something down to your top. Over the wall, smoke screen comes out, makes it hard for Owner to follow up. Could have gone for the kick to try to set up Kana, but doesn't want to take it. In the meantime, they're just denying away from Khan. Yeah, I think the smoke screen stopped him from being able to wall jump forward there as Gumuyushi dodges away from Canyon's W there. Faker has TP to respond to any play that kicks off, so Showmaker, actually, only with boots tier 1, is, has to just push in midwaves as quick as he can and move to either side if T1 want to force something. T1 tried to cross map there, they saw Dragon died, maybe they can make a pick on Takan. Unfortunately, they could not in the end, so the map's in a stable position right now, and it's going into a 1-3-1 here for both teams. Ghost moving first, though. Faker on the side, might be able to grab a tower. There's no more plates for him, but the Herald is respawning now. 
Elma Key a priority access. Can look to break down a tower with this one. It looks like T1 are not comfortable enough to contest. Yeah, and I think it, I think it's a good decision. They don't really have vision on that on that top side. The plates are already down, so there's less value from the Herald anyway. Faker is going to be able to get some damage down on the bottom side. You know, is Resolve as the primary tree, so going to have Demolish. And we'll see. Karia potentially flanking here. It's be a long flank, but Kana's moving down. And Faker's TP over the wall. Dodges back from the Pulverize there. Headbutt still available for Barrel. Showmaker still trying to play on the edge there, but Graves is still pushing in on the top side. Draven in the meanwhile just holding into mid lane, but Faker's grabbing so much damage on this bot lane tower. Is Dawn Kia really need to try and find the fight here? Stand aside goes in, but not going to amount to much. Harold will get used mid lane, and they'll at least trade one for one, but in the top side, Khan grabbing a tower of his own as well. Will they get this? Faker's basing and he has TP. There's a ward behind them on the right side there next to the tier one. T1 could look to pull the trigger here if Dam1 overstep. The important thing here is T1 is catching top waves and getting a bot tier one, whereas Showmaker is just standing in mid with the rest of his team and fell behind in experience there. Level 10 to level 11 of Faker. It's actually so nice to see how these teams are playing. It does feel like an evolution from the LCK finals where, you know, we saw last game T1 willing to actually trade bot side for Herald again. This game making a smart trade bot side for Herald, not just completely opting into every 5v5 there. They're playing a couple Baker. of really clean games. Dalmont is in the area here. Do they go? Harold going in, committing on the engage. Still has the ult heaven available. Whirling Death coming out very early. The value of that execute is going to be gone before the fight even starts. T1 take control of mid lane, but both sides know how much is at stake if they fully commit for the engage. A single mistake could cost you the game. Neither side looking to overstep. Well, Faker wasn't spotted there until the last second from Dalmont Barrel. Backed away just in time. Khan's gonna base and has TP as well. Mid wave contest non stop from both these teams. Looks like T1 wanna push Damwon back to get control of this bot side river. No dragon for 2 minutes 30 seconds, but both teams wanna force this mid tower. Yeah, Faker, I think, gonna move down bot side. The wave is actually, he crashed on the tier 2, so it's pushing out towards him. You can see, though, again, T1 have the advantage in sides because Faker got the push. He took the mid one, or rather, tier 1 bot gets that, bounces the wave, so now he gets all this juicy farm to pick up. He's gonna push that back the right way for them. Khan is up on this top side, has the shield bow complete now, so a critical pickup for him. And he'll look to be pushing in there. Well, the core three have reset and are gonna try to get mid lane control, which could mean that tier one falls mid. So good from T1. Hold steady, come up with something new in the Oslo, but it's worked pretty solidly throughout this early game. Has not been the most explosive games, really only action on the top side of the map. No all-out skirmishes quite yet. Get later and later the game, see who can find the edge here. But for now, T1, again, simple comp to execute when you have a Lissandra. Find access, push R, kill somebody, and keep it going. That said, very volatile when you're pairing it with Yasuo. I feel like this is something we kind of saw in the finals, T1 versus Damwon, where T1 would get a good early game gold lead through map play or just getting towers, but then Damwon just dissected them through the map. And sometimes T1 were their own worst enemies, where they overchased into the enemy team after getting one singular kill. So they need to be a lot more patient and collected around this next dragon spawning soon. And it, it's, it's so stressful when you get later and later into the game and there hasn't been a big fight yet, because this fight will be so explosive and it can decide so much in the game. You know, if you commit to a 5v5 this late in the game, at that dragon, you take the dragon for yourselves, you get all those kills for yourself, you can put yourself monumentally, oh, and they're there going. There, Khan, the chain CC coming in, he uses the all barrel now following up, Ghost waiting off to the side, doesn't want to overcommit for this one, but just a lot of cooldowns being burnt. No one from Dawn Kia is going to drop, but a lot of blinking health bars might mean T1 get priority access to the Drake. But Khan has shield bow and he has TP, so he can actually base and TP back. There's the Canyon. Canyon locked up, now the fall from Yasuo going in, Canyon flashes right over the wall, keep your eyes on Ghost though, if you can land the ultimate, if you can find it, that's the word. There it is! 800 gold for Ghost, as he finally finds the kill he was looking for. T1 looked for the pick onto Canyon, but Khan, are you to win wall way too early so he couldn't defend Carrier. Now T1 are facing a 4v5 situation without an ultimate on Faker or Kana. It's only owner and Gumayushi with it, but Damon are low and Barrel looks like he wants to back off. TP coming in here from Faker. They still have control around the river, but Showmaker's looking for it. Back over the wall. Q does not connect. T1 trying to take control of mid lane, knowing that this will give them priority access to the Drake. Five seconds on the spawn. Ultimates are down, but it feels more impactful for T1 to be missing those. No Lissandra ult, no kick, no Yasuo ult is such a big deal. They will take that mid lane tier one. They get big control. They'll go down towards this dragon, likely be able to grab that for themselves. But it just felt like a little bit of split decisions from T1 in those those looks where they were going for the pick. They committed the Lissandra ult onto Khan, but then they didn't actually have that when they tried to go all in for Canyon. So they didn't quite have enough on either side. You know, you want to try to use all those abilities together, utilizing the, the Yasuo ult, the Lissandra ult, all these to kind of stack and layer and make sure you get that first kill. So you get those frozen thralls out from Lissandra and can begin to run over the fight. Yeah, you're completely right, Azale. It's T1 who can dictate the fight.
fights, right? Damwon, the only real engage they have is an Alistar if he can flash combo into Gumayushi, uh, and then maybe some kind of chains from Showmaker or a Q3 from Canyon. So Damwon have to wait for T1 to commit and then turn as they do it. If T1 don't commit completely on the same target and in kind of harmony, then Damwon can turn quite easily. Barrel can stop the backline from uh, getting close. And then we see it right there. And double marksman in an extended fight is so difficult to deal with. The Graves, the Draven are going to have incredible value. You need to get that first kill as T1. When you commit your ultis, you need the reward. And in this case, they do try to go all in here for Canyon. But as I said, there's no Lissandra ult. They don't actually have that. So the lockdown is not long enough. The wind wall was spent early, as you called out, Kadrel. And then there's just not the defense on the carrier. The execute comes through. That is 1,150 gold off of one kill. And that is Ghost now in a position to carry back-to-back -back games, potentially. Yeah, and the wind wall is what bails you out of these fights, T1. When you overcommit, you pop the wind wall to stop them from being able to damage you while you're committing to that one target. Similarly, though, Canyon, with his ultimate, able to mitigate so much of the follow-up damage that's coming from Jin. But I think it's good that we highlight Ghost, because again, incredible game one on the Jin, more of a utility carry. Yeah, this a good time, game. it's the Draven. And he's already popping off again. Very quiet in the early game while he farms stacks, but, you know, cashed him in in the end, and that's all that matters. This was not a player that we expected to be laser focused on. We expected this matchup to be all about top side, unless Guma Yushi was given something like the Aphelios. Instead, Ghost really making a name for himself in this one. And I think he's just been getting better and better. You know, he's a player that has received a lot of criticism, but it's tough because you're on a team of some of the best players in history, right? So, yes, he doesn't always look as strong by comparison to Canyon or to Showmaker. Uh, but he is an incredible player in his own right, and definitely showing that here against T1's bot lane, who is considered by many to be the strongest at the tournament. Lock up, LeBlanc manages to get back over the wall, and now the follow-up to flash out to safety carry are going to be in trouble. No follow-up on the frozen claw there. Yeah, the ultimate has a tiny cast time, so Showmaker could W back before it instantly locked him down. If he hit the ultimate, he could have hit the Everfrost too, and the Jin W could have followed shortly after, so Showmaker playing with fire there. But they did get Showmaker's flash, so that is actually a pretty big deal. It is just the ult for flash, because T1 didn't overcommit. They just expended the Lissandra ult, carry at W's over the wall. He knows if, if that lands, there was going to be follow-up, he would have gone down, so he is forced to commit the summoner. And that is going to mean Showmaker has to play it much more safe around these objectives. When he's dancing in and out, you can get punished really heavily. Yeah, and especially when he's running Sorcerer's Shoes on LeBlanc against Lissandra and Rakan. Showmaker might have to be careful here. Faker doesn't have the ultimate, but one lockdown CC will keep him locked down because he has no tenacity to work with unless he has it in his second tree. It's also worth mentioning, Ghost decided to go exhaust here. He's not playing cleanse, right? So there is a tremendous amount of CC. Ghost can be a good target for the Lissandra ult as well. If he mispositions, it's going to be a while till he gets that QSS, and that's a big target that Damwon are depending on to really output the damage in these fights. Certainly it is, and Windwall doubly punishing against a Draven when you drop the axes, when it stops that from being able to come through, significant portion of your reliable damage output. So while Ghost, yes, has to stand aside, can mitigate a lot of these potential engages, he is also in a difficult position. Hard to play out these fights against so much CC, against a Windwall, more pressure on him to try and make it work. And again, a game that is neck and neck. Yes, there is one tower difference. Yes, there's 1k gold difference, but that's really all that's separating the team. Yasuo finally on two items, 100% crit already at this point in the game. Lissandra with the Hourglass, T1 strength, getting ramping up most certainly. Yeah, can I just say, the, the early game to mid game has been beautiful from both teams, Absolutely. both these games. Every single time one team has tempo top side or bot side and they have a numbers advantage, the other team just finds some kind of cross map play, whether it's tier two trades, tier one trades over sides. You can see it right there, T1 get the top tower, Damon one respond with bot tower, and that's just great to watch. I mean, there's only a 1k gold lead between both these teams with one minute on the dragon. That's where both these teams are gonna be putting their focus. But that 1k gold lead, is Ghost's QSS. And that is crucial oh, because that's right as you five. highlighted it, right as you highlighted it, he yeah. has just enough money to pick it up. And that does mean that he is no longer the easy pickings that we thought he might be. Yeah, exactly. It makes it very, very difficult. You, know, you still can try to just have an overwhelming amount of CC and punish him in that way. But often what Lissandra has to do is then just look for the LeBlanc, look for these other targets that don't have QSS. And once everyone has QSS, well, then it's time to sell fall. <laughs> then it's time to actually, you know, just get in and play more for the zone control yeah. where you try to keep those damage dealers out to try to create this area where you're going to threaten them, you're going to push them back and buy time for your teammates to get damage done. Because T1 can really play well around space in team fights. If you send Lissandra into the back line, that pushes you out. When the ult expires, you drop the wind wall and you try to play through look, that. Look at the wards behind Damon in uh, in their blue side jungle. Faker has some great TP wards to look for if Damon over commits here, but it looks like he's just going to ignore that and run towards his team, help them get the push because Damon have so much control of this river. Looks like Faker will have to be there to push them out. Yeah, and T1 do have the deep wards, but they don't have any vision of where Damon actually is. 
Looking for it. Keep your eyes on Faker, that frozen tomb. The path into the backside. Instantly, the Rakan getting things kicked off. Khan and everyone's now Ghost moving in, but that's Ghost down. Yasuo are getting things started, and here comes Faker on the backside, waiting for the perfect ultimate. In the meantime, Dan Wakia getting things kicked off. Another knockup coming in from Khan to the Yasuo. Two clutch. Barrel still coming out. Showmaker still alive. Khan still alive. Faker trying to finish the job. Showmaker running for his life. He's juking. He's diving. He's finding a way out. But Gomuyushi comes in with the bullet to find the kill. T1 on the knife's edge. Khan still standing. So much life steal, but it will not be Khan enough. Off T1 take the fight. Honor and Faker standing strong. It's a bloodbath at the Dragon. And T1 coming out on top. Faker and Showmaker had a 1v1 for so, so long. Showmaker was the one who had to run for the hills. Eventually, he went back to his distortion and Gumayushi finished him off. It ended up in a 2v2 and T1 get the Dragon, then they get the ace. Oh my god, what a fight that was. That battle between Showmaker and Faker. Faker locking him down for so long. The greatest of all time versus the showmaker. <laughs> Sit down, kid. You still got something to learn. And we see it here, right? Ghost was just way too far up. Carrier instantly punished him, and there's the combo. The knock-up into the Arsenal. Look at Faker. He comes around the side. It's just such a bloodbath scrap of four or five members on top of each other. But Faker singles out showmaker right there. Stuns him, locks him up, roots him as much as possible to keep him out of the fight, which means Gumayushi can live for so long, and eventually Gumayushi is the one to finish Showmaker off. But as much as it feels like, wow, everything went right for T1, look how close the fight was, because Canyon and Khan were getting work done. The Draven died early, the LeBlanc was locked down, but it was it was hunting season for Graves as well as for the Sin Zhao, who were just wrecking havoc on T1. Yeah, that fight was on a knife's edge, and Ghost was blown up in the first two seconds of the fight, right? So. T1 need to make sure that the way they progress, they progress together. They need to make sure they're not so split up and they can push Damwon back when they make this pick. And I think, again, massive game for Owner. We talked about Canyon looking to cement his legacy, but Owner in game one, not relevant. The Poppy, once it fell behind, did nothing. This game with the Lee Sin, 4-1-3, and 100% kill participation, has been everywhere that he needs to be. Absolutely. And Lee Sin was huge in the quarterfinals as well. And with it coming out, you know, if T1 win this game off of a great Lee Sin performance, Canyon obviously dominated with it in game number one, that can shift draft priorities. If it becomes a must-ban, something else is going to open up. But T1, only with a very slim lead. It's only two dragons. It's only 500 gold. And if Ghost doesn't get caught out like that, the fights could still look pretty rough here for T1. Contest over Midwave once again. Khan is pushing bot. Khan has a lot of damage right now. So yes, you can lock down Ghost, but he has both Summoners up and the QSS. And Khan, if he's untouched, will just melt through T1. No real front line to stand in his way. Mid Contest coming in once again. Both teams just want to push in this Midwave and contest either side of the river with Baron being up. Don Kia stepping forward, Khan getting very, very aggressive, but again, their composition outside of the Alistair really lacks immediate aggressive engage tools, which means Khan is just free on the side lane to keep pushing, to keep pressuring, as T1 might look to collapse if Don Kia do not move perfectly. T1 just playing this really, really well. This had been one of their weaknesses against Dalmon in the in the past, was that they would often over push, they would get caught inside, so they didn't play this push and pull game of split push well. But in this case, they're in the 4-1, Dalmon is grouped as 5, so as Dalmon move forward, T1 moves back, that buys time for Kana to push in that wave to deny some of that goal to Damwon. And then as soon as they move over, Kana moves back. And now T1's four move into the river, getting that Baron vision, establishing control in this area. And this is just beautiful League of Legends. Absolutely. And this is the reason that so many people expected five games. It's not because of what we saw in the finals. It's because of what T1 has shown us in this tournament. The great growth. The growth that they've been developing. And again, keep in mind, Rookies on the stage. These are babies on the international stage. They lost game one. So many players with a great Grandpa, Grandpa Faker there in the middle. Grandpa Faker there in the middle. 151 games. The splinter to the Ninja Turtles, I think you said, Cable. <laughs> <earlier. laughs> He's holding it together, and I think it is important to have that voice behind you because obviously so much more experience on the side of Dom Juan Kia. T1 holding their own in this game, too, is massive. Yeah, the rookies of T1 can look to their left, look to their right, and they know that they have the greatest player of all time in the mid lane to rely on when it comes to these tense situations, but Damwon are just such a well-oiled machine that right now it's just even footing on both sides. Midwave contests, vision contests, both waiting for an objective to spawn. One minute, 30 seconds on the next dragon. That'll put T1 on Ocean Soul Point, and Damwon don't actually have any vision control right now. It's very hard for them to push T1 backwards because of the amount of ultimates that T1 have. Baker's teleport up. Can always fish for another flank. The deep vision isn't really there. Khan sweeping it out now. Coming over the wall, starting the Baron. I think he just is after the ward at this point. 
just going to look to leave, and this one go right back over with the quick draw. But again, the pressure rising. A single play could turn this game against T1. They have all the tools to start a fight on their terms, but if they pick a single bad fight, this Graves, this Draven, this little Blanc yeah. will pick them to pieces. And you know the Baron take is so easy for Dalmon off of a one fight because you have that double Marksman. It will go down incredibly fast, but T1 just trying to get these side lanes pushed. I wonder if Kana has the Death Dance complete here. I'm assuming that's what he's going to go for, and he does have it. That's a very big buy against what is an overwhelmingly physical damage comp here from Dom Juan. But so much of, of these fights is really just down to execution for T1 because they don't have tankiness in their characters. They have tankiness from, from their, their mitigation, from their abilities, right? From the zone control created by the Lissandra, from the wind wall used by the Asuo, from the CC that they put out. If you are not on point with those, you can get blown up instantaneously by this Dumb One comp. Yeah, and Dumb One aren't even going to opt into this Dragon, it looks like. Unless Showmaker wants to push this top wave and TP down towards the Dragon, looks like Dumb One just want to threaten the Nash. And the thing is, if T1 commit too many numbers to this Dragon, Dumb One can burst this down, just like you said, Azale. Double Marksman does so much damage to a neutral objective, so T1 have to push Dumb One out to this top side solo it. before they look for it. And as you say, Kana walks towards there, has the TP. All T1 need to do now is just show themselves. Show themselves into Dumb One's face and say, you cannot stop this Nash, otherwise we will contest you. In the meantime, they are getting this Dragon Soul point. Grabbing their third Drake. They the started game. it. I think Dom one started it. Dom one Kia can start this one up. Dragon already going down barrel. Trying to play bouncer for this pit. It is going down, but not quickly enough. Yasuo now in the area. Can use a kick to get himself there. Showmaker fishing for a flank. Dom one Kia confident here. Taking their time on starting this, but splitting up very heavily. A single mistake could cost them everything. Showmaker off on the flank. T1 pushing in. Dom one Kia, you have to feel need to back away from this one, and they will. Well played by T1 not to give up anything for that Drake. Yeah, that was really clean. Kana goes towards Dragon. He solos that out. He TPs mid. He realizes that... Oh, the Drake forward Goes Golden. Showmaker buys a bit more time. Showmaker now tries to leap out to safety. The timing is almost perfect, but not quite enough. He ults the clone. That's not who you needed, Kana. Kana in the back line. Knocks him back in. Knocks him under the tower. Trying to finish the job. Kana, though, getting picked apart again. Goes Golden. Tries to buy a bit more time. Canyon standing strong under the tower. It's a bloodbath overall, but T1, all five members stand in the midst of that mid lane skirmish. Yeah, 45 seconds on Khan. There was a little bit of miscommunication there from T1 going for the execution on the Showmaker. I think Faker saw his moment in a split second decision, goes for the play, and Showmaker reacts with a stopwatch on the Lissandra ult, so they didn't have enough lockdown to take Showmaker down. Faker doesn't have TP, so he's really low right now. T1 have absolutely no ultimates to work with other than Khan's, and Damwon have Smite, so they're going to walk up and try and contest it. 25 seconds on Khan, and he has TP. Maybe T1 want to turn. Arrow sidestep, Ghost still standing strong. Faker could be in trouble after Spock with Gumiushi off on the backside with a four shot waiting, will not give up too easily. T1 now forced away from the Baron as well. Back and forth it goes. T1, 2k lead, but a tense battle Showmaker. overall. Showmaker fishing, trying to take down Karia, buy more time. They can counter Baron. The resets. Yep. Counter Baron after counter Baron, but who will take it in the end? Khan could TP in, they could look to force this, but Beryl had to base and he had no wards left, so Damon can't put a vision line to make sure they can turn in time if T1 respond. T1, no TPs left after these plays. Damwon still have both, and Faker finds his moment. Yeah, he finds the moment here to go straight in. Very quick stopwatch, though, on the ultimate cast, so it can't come through. And then the kick, I just think Kana wasn't actually yep. expecting it, so the ultimate was late. That's the communication you're talking about. The ultimate comes out only actually catching that clone, and then it's a bloodbath as Khan is in the back line trying to duel against Gumiyushi and Karia. He uses his stopwatch as well. But I have to say, another fight where Ghost really can't do much. Khan's committing to try and buy time for the backline, but Ghost really can't find his way into the fight because there's so much zone control. And even a fight like that, where T1 is kind of under your tier 3 in a way, and they use two ultimates on a clone, they still came out on top, so Ghost needs to find his way into these fights. He has these three items complete, he has a lot of damage, and Showmaker just picked up Azonias to negate that ultimate once again from Faker, you expect. And again, as they all called it out earlier, but I think we have to say it again, the Death Dance here is such a crucial buy, because even when Canyon knocked him out of the tower, there's no magic damage coming in. Kana was able to live for so long, despite not being a tanky champion yeah. by any means, but between a shield bow and a death stance, very hard to lock up. Now he's got a stopwatch as well. He can take aggressive ult and try to find aggressive picks. And owner's itemization compared to Canyon's is becoming a really big deal here because he has the full GA above Canyon's items. And at that point, you can start to play in a different way as Lee Sin. You can start to be willing to trade out your life for that of a carry. You find the kick flash on Ghost. You are down to die for that if it means that Ghost is going to go down as well. Yeah, late game team fights are all about 
out time. As much as you can buy, it gives you so much more opportunities the longer the fight goes on. And T1 have an Ocean Soul point in 1 minute 40 seconds. Dam1 have single target damage and only an Alistar to face check. So the more they walk up, T1 are going to try to push them back when they're all established in mid lane. So what they're going to do is push out these sides. Kana's going to push bot, Faker's push top. They're going to come back towards mid and stop Dam1 from getting into the river. And you notice it's been owner's job here to actually keep vision cleared out of this Baron pit, to keep some sort of eyes on that because they know Dom1 could try to go again for a trade, try to take the Baron when they go towards the soul. So they want to make sure that they have forewarning of this, that they can respond to this if that's going to be the option here from Dom1. And so far a wild series, 35 minutes in, still very close. T1 very clearly in control with the Dragon Lee, but only 2k separating them. And again, we now have 80 carries and junglers trading all-star performances. Game one, it was Canyon and Ghost all the time. Here, Owner and Gumiyushi both doing some work here. Six overall in the kill participation out of eight. Gumiyushi, no slouch on the Jin either. And you can see Canyon Elixir in inventory. That tells you you're feeling this could be the fight that decides the game. Owner and as well. very likely it will be, yeah. Both players trying to maximize their power for this fight, trying to get their buys in, pick up enough pinks, because they know this could decide it. Yeah, Showmaker has a pod too. Faker just finished Rabidons. This next fight will decide the game. 30 seconds on the Ocean Soul. T1 have two options. Do we stop Dam1 coming into bot side river, or do we just run towards top side? And as they go towards Drake, just trade a Baron for it, right? They have two winning plays here that Dam1 have to shut down. And the only way they can do it is getting vision and pushing T1 back, but it looks like T1 are standing their ground. DK grouping his five, ready to push them back. Carry able to leap back to safety of the team. Damwon Kia, not a ton of engage tools. Have to be careful, have to use their engage very well if they want to come out on top. And Khan's just playing great. And he's going going on in. The wall. Khan now getting picked off, gonna get kicked, things kicked off, but Khan managing to leap back out of safety. Damwon Kia peeling back, getting so many cooldowns at the cost of nothing. Khan can recall, come back in with a TP, and we can see another 5v5. Akana leaping through the minions, trying to deny the recall, ready to stop Khan for finding his way back to base. T1 has to go for Nash now. They can't contest this dragon. Are they in time to even burst this down with a Jin and Lissandra? The Yasuo will do a lot of damage, and Damwon realize they're gonna be lined towards the Baron. There's three ultimates down for T1. They're baiting Carrier. Pop ulti. the ultimate. T1 are out of ultimates. They're out of options. It's only they Khan is all left. They wanted to try to look for the turn. They didn't actually decide to commit to it. So Damwon do come out on top. They do spend the flashes. They do spend the ultis, but they, they walk away with the dragon here. And now they are onto the Baron here. They're trying to force T1 into this difficult position. Yeah, Kumayushi and Kerry are just based as well. And Damwon have so much damage for this Baron. It looks like they can get this if they want to. Faker has the ultimate up. Kana's going to TP top. T1 have to contest this, but they have no vision. Kerry on the way. 6k. Getting lower and lower, could all come down to a single lead. Faker, Faker, single smite. Faker over the wall, 16. Oh, goes it, 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 it's massive. Faker off to the backside. Keep your eyes on that one. They find the reset. That's going to be one. Frozen Thralls now coming out. Down one. Kia getting routed in the river, but Canyon still standing strong for a moment. No. Double, triple for Guma Yushi. Follow up kill. A smite steal from owner. The rookies on Showmaker. T1 are making their market world. Showmaker wants to make a play, but not today. Sit down, Showmaker. This is T1's time. Owner, the 18 year old jungler, steals the Baron from Canyon alongside Faker to clean up that one. Five kills to none, and T1 are going to take game two. What a way to end it. The confidence from the rookies here. Owner, young players like him being able to get in there, steal the Baron to bring out this Yasuo comp here for T1, for Kana as well. An incredible punch back here from T1. We're all tied up. And if you cast your mind back to the T1 Gen G series and playoffs, Gen G were the ones who took game one, and then T1 were the ones who came back in the next three games to make it a 3 1. Game one's not their comfort zone. It looks like game two and game three is when they start to feel it. T1 certainly ramping it up, and Lee Sin went from a pick you can't give to a canyon to a pick you can't give to either jungler. At the end of the day, the coordination from T1, again, rookie lineup, so incredible. These are guys who hadn't even decided on their starting five until we got into Worlds. It's an incredible feat. It's absolutely amazing. And I, I just think that the draft coming to game three is going to be so interesting. It feels like with the rising in priority of Lee Sin, that could change things up. That could open up some other picks potentially. The Yasuo is a wrinkle we didn't expect. Leona's value almost feels like it has gone down because of the showing of the Maokai. Uh -huh. It seemed like a good answer. So there's a lot of things for these guys to consider in this next about 20 minutes that they have. Oh, yeah. I expect that one to go back towards the blue side and maybe look to prioritize something like the TF to Lee Sin again. Uh, T1 probably going to look to deny that from them. But man, this series is going to be. It's going to be something. Banger series, no doubt. But uh, speaking of banger series, Arcane Riot's first animated series is coming to Netflix November 6th, set in the utopian region of Piltover in the impressed underground of Zaun. Uh, oppressed, not impressed. The story follows the origins of two iconic league champions and the power that will tear them apart. Let's get a sneak peek as we head to that commercial break.